What's up? How are you guys this week? We are back for the June health and nutrition q and If you guys missed the opportunity to ask your question, then just keep an eye on the community page. I usually ask every few weeks uh, what questions you guys have. So we'll jump right in with broadband to God's question. I've been wondering where how you learned about a lack of iodine in babies causes facial and jaw deformalities. I've never heard this before. You said it and have a hard time proving a good source. Thank you. I don't remember off the top of my head what video I said this in, but any sort of nutritional deficiency is going to cause irregularity in a person's soft and hard tissue development. There are plenty of pictures of indigenous tribes and groups of people, and it's kind of weird. They almost all look the same. Like all the men look very, very similar. All the women look very, very similar. Uh, the variations in our modern diets, basically lack of nutrients are what causes the problem. So it's not necessarily iodine on its own. It's a whole bunch of minerals in combination with toxins and pollutants in our environment, stressing our nutritional stores additionally. Uh, I'm not gonna even try to pronounce this guy's name. AML seal colors. Constraining water key for liquids, specifically after fermentation, be better for someone with gut issues due to organic matter, larger particles, and certain components that might irritate some people and lead to bloating gas. I don't know what settles in the water kefir towards the top and towards the bottom. Maybe it benefits you to like pour some off the top, passing it through a filter. That might be a bad idea you might remove some beneficial components but I'm not hundred percent sure maybe you would just remove a small amount of yeast in it which if anything would be beneficial but you're overthinking you should worry way more about how properly the water kefir is made as opposed to filtering it the wood smoky how can you minimize the negative effects that years of bad eating choices can have on the body Specifically, the plastics, chemicals, additives, and pesticides. Thanks, Frank. Love your products. Just try not to overlook anything. You know, make sure you're following a high-quality organic diet. Make sure you're not interacting with too many pollutants, whether it's changing your water supply, reducing the EMF radiation exposure, grounding every day, air quality. You know, we've spoken about all these components on my channel, and once you have those basics in check, then you can kind of dig a little deeper and, and try to nitpick and optimize things. Kemp dude, I've been buying your meat shares for a while now and the meat tastes really great. The grass fed meat I get at the store rarely tastes anything close to as good. I would like to understand why the meat in the store is generally worse and also usually goes bad in a couple days. Most meat in grocery stores is already three, four, five, six weeks old, which honestly isn't that big of a deal because they're wet aged in vacuum bags. The issue is, you know, what temperature were they handled at? And grocery stores don't keep their meat in vacuum bags like we do. They put it in like open containers so it oxidizes a lot quicker. That's why. August, how much strength training and or cardio do you think is optimal for longevity? I'm not concerned with aesthetics. So you wanna build up a base of muscle. I would say it's, it's hard. You wanna look lean but have an even amount of muscle all over the body and then I would say probably half an hour of cardio a day is, is probably good. You know, you need to have that base of muscle in the first place, which is obtained with high volume resistance training. So you might have to be in the gym pretty intensely for a year or two. And then once you build up that base of muscle that, you know, you would naturally have if you were active your whole life, then you can try to uh, focus less on the weight training and just the cardio and light weight training every week. Jason Jones. I recall you mentioned that if one is having issues incorporating water kefir, they should take some B vitamins. Why might taking B vitamin complex alongside the water kefir help? Uh, because the water kefir has an alcohol content and it's also high in histamine. And B vitamins can help the body deal with both of those. Uh, could also be mineral deficiency related, but you're better off just making sure 100% that the water kefir is made properly and uh, that you might have to reduce the amount you're drinking. Joe or IO, is it okay to incorporate your ready bought homemade bone broth into the diet protocol at the start? Um, you can put a little bit if you're trying to get some variety in your recipes. I would just look at my day of eatings and you guys can see what I'm doing. Like putting a few tablespoons of it in your udon noodles is perfectly fine, but 
I wouldn't jump in and start having like half a jar to a whole jar of the collagen broth every day. YZEDC, do you know Hench Herbivore was recently in the hospital for a gallstone? Any thoughts on it? Yeah, when you don't have enough saturated fat and cholesterol and animal nutrients in the diet, that's what happens with the gallbladder of the gallstones. We did a whole video on it. We did a whole video. Search Frank Tefano gallbladder if you guys want like the full in-depth scientific explanation. Milk Tea Alliance, does stale bread act like a net or cage scrapper for pulling in more toxins to detox. So you have to think about a food for liver detox as in like how much liquid it can soak up. Like a piece of bread is dry. Starch, pasta is dry. It can soak up more liquid after you eat it. Something like a potato, a piece of steak, a lot of different vegetables. They don't really soak up that much water after you eat them. Beans kind of do, the, the fiber in the beans. So beans and bread, Pasta noodles, udon noodles specifically, are excellent, excellent, excellent for soaking toxins from the liver. That's why you can't detox on a keto or a protein diet because there's nothing to soak up the toxins. He asks another question. If not by the ocean, can you recreate seawater and spray it on yourself before tanning? I don't know if that's really a significant benefit uh, compared to just getting a lot of sunlight. Sparo B. After following the diet protocol consisting of water, kefir, and mastic, with the diet for a couple weeks. What are the safest and best to supplement vitamins and minerals you would first start off with? B vitamin complex and vitamin C. Magnesium, would these three best, safest, and less stressful on the liver to begin with? Hair mineral analysis can help to see if any of your minerals are out of whack. In regards to vitamins, you can just try them and see how you feel. That, that's really it. You know, take vitamin C one day, see how you react. Take vitamin B complex one day, see how you react. Because um, the vitamins are kind of hard to measure, even with blood work, usually they show up normal. So uh, we did a whole video on B vitamins where I explained like how to know which one to take. So definitely search Frank Tefano B vitamins uh, if you guys want the in-depth explanation on singling out which supplements, uh, which we do have on organsupplements.com. Io asked another question. I mean, this is this is more of a personal thing. Um, if, if you guys are having a hard time figuring out the diet, everything is laid out in my protocol videos and videos I've done on the supplements. Isaac, after adhering to the diet protocol with no supplements for a while, how would you approach incorporating your supplements? For example, would you start off with the B-complex for a week followed by adding in the vitamin C for one week after? Week by week, would you then incorporate individual mineral supplementation based on your hair test and gauge how you feel? Yeah, that's basically what you would do. Uh, I would actually be careful and spend more time not having supplements because you'll know when you feel better. There are specific things like vitamin B1 and masticum that you might wanna just take with all high starch carbohydrate meals. In regards to overall mineral and B-complex and magnesium and vitamin C supplementation, all that type of stuff, you wanna have them separated on different days to see if you feel better or worse taking it. That guitar guy guy, if you could go back in time and change one thing, not money related, what would you, I mean, I don't really like questions like this. Yeah, I mean, I could give you guys a laundry list of different things that, you know, could have gone better or worse with my life. But uh, I, I think the main one, which is what I really created my YouTube channel for and, and what keeps me going with all my businesses is uh, just making sure that, you know, from developmental stages of life, everyone is, getting adequate nutrition because if everyone was tall, beautiful, and physically healthy, the world would be a lot different to say the least. So I think, I think that's the most important thing to change and then, you know, once that happens, everything else can be, can be fixed. But not that, you can't go, you can't fix that without a time machine. Go Among Us, how do you gauge your enzyme intake? I saw you taking five capsules per meal of enzymes, now only one to do. I don't really take it anymore. Uh, I'm okay without the enzymes. You have to try and see how you respond, see how you're sleeping while taking it, see how large your bowel movements are. Buddha, why aren't you fermenting the potatoes? Wouldn't that help with the anti-nutrients? The fermentation process doesn't really make that much of a difference. Maybe soaking it in salt water does sometimes, but the most significant thing for anti-nutrient content in grains is to have a variety in your diet and see what makes you feel better. Uh, like today I had a bagel with some macadamia nut butter for breakfast. I had a roll with some potatoes and beans for lunch, and then for dinner I'm gonna have some wheat pasta. So I eat a lot of wheat because that's what I feel good and that I respond best to. Um, sometimes, you know, I find when I eat a lot of potatoes or I eat a lot of quinoa or certain grains, 
it's good to have variety and then stick to like the base of a grain that you feel the best eating. 144 Avery, which is better, UVA or UVB lamps? So UVB is what gives you the vitamin D. UVA can darken and recycle the skin. The answer to that is uh, to go out in the sun where you get both, and most bulbs are actually combination UVA, UVB. You can't actually get pure UVB bulbs. They're medical grade. Uh, you won't have access to them. Christian, will chicken tenders come back in stock? Uh, unfortunately, no. We just have the whole chickens, the breasts, the thighs, and the wings, and some organs, and soup chickens. Corey Jane, another question. How can I assess whether or not I should supplement zinc copper? My copper is by far the lowest mineral on my hair test. Zinc is a bit under the adequate threshold. My ferritin is under 30. You know, you take it one or two days and you see how you feel. Like, some people are overly dramatic about taking certain minerals and think they're really, really bad for you. But you know, if you take zinc one day, take one small copper pill the next day, see how you react. If you don't feel a lot better, if you don't sleep a lot better, then just don't take it again because the, the hair mineral test might not be 100% accurate, uh, but it is kind of like reassuring that you know just by taking that one copper pill that you got a ton of very bioavailable copper that your body can use if it actually does need it and if it's not absorbing it from food properly. JT, I've been making water kefir a lot. It's really helped my health, but recently several of my bottles have shattered and made a mess everywhere. Is there a solution to not cause that without sacrificing the fermentation? Or do I need to use newer bottles more frequently? So after the water kefir is put in a sealed vessel, the carbonation and pressure will start to build up. You have to figure out whether you need one or two days of fermentation, and then you put it in the fridge. And the cold temperature reduces the bacterial activity so that when you open it up, it won't explode. Stephen Jacobs, how can I see what my vitamin A levels are over time? Is blood test the only way? So the fat soluble vitamins are stored in the liver, so you can't really gauge what the amount is. Uh, but if you get a blood test and the level is X and you don't take any of the vitamin, this applies to vitamin D as well, vitamin A or D. And then next year you get the same blood test and the level is the same. That's a sign that your liver stores could be really high. You don't know if they're toxic or not because toxic levels will not show up in the blood. But you know, for me, I used to supplement a lot of vitamin D and I haven't taken it in probably three, four years now and my levels are still pretty good. So until the levels start depleting on the blood work, you can't really say that the liver doesn't have enough. A lot of people will come from like a standard American diet and just start supplementing crazy amounts of vitamin D after uh, seeing it low on their blood work, but that's actually a good starting point because you safely know that your liver isn't toxic with the nutrient. Yeah, this guy's asking a lot of questions about ocean water and if it's healthy for the skin. I haven't really looked into that. Maybe the, the high salinity content has kind of like a, an effect on the skin where it kind of dries it out and the skin tries to refresh itself. Nathan, thoughts on Dr. Raymond Pete's work? Uh, so if you guys are unfamiliar, Ray Pete was some kind of like uh, cult following, passed away recently. And the only thing I really have to say about that is the way they went about his cause of death and keeping it hush hush, it's just sketchy. It's just sketchy. You know, instead of, look, I've said this before. I, I've answered this question several times on the live streams. You know, if I drop dead of something and I was wrong, hey, maybe people can learn from my mistakes instead of um, whoever you know, his family or people that are still profiting off of his ideas, they're trying to keep it going and not reveal what his cause of death was. So, uh, but his diet wasn't perfect to say the least. Slide for Larry. Should our pee be yellow? Should we hydrate until our pee is clear for optimal health? You know, it's easy to overhydrate, and you could kind of tell if you're thirsty, you should always drink water. Um, I don't think it should be yellow. Probably light yellow to clear is fine. Maybe clear is you're drinking a little too much water. It's more important to actually choose a high quality water source as opposed to just hydrating in general. Uh, we have several videos on water. You guys know you wanna drink like glass bottle mineral water that is free of fluoride, chlorine, all the pollutants. Isaiah, get the EMF canopy and floor protection sheet back in stock. I'll give you my money ASAP. I think I have one floor sheet and one canopy left, uh, but we're getting some more in July. So in about two weeks, we should have them. I'm sorry about the delay.
Erica Gardens just said beans question mark. Uh, probably the most important detox food. I have it every day for dinner and I try to have it throughout the rest of the day too because they're an excellent source of soluble fiber which you need to detox your liver. Last question from the same clown, Milk Tea Alliance. What about Frankie's after some full body freaky loop for Japanese neuromassage? Maybe on Frankie's Naturals in a year or two when we, uh, we have some disposable income. But that's gonna be it for the Q&A guys. How long have we been going? Okay, not, not too crazy long today. Um, sorry I didn't put the questions up on the screen like I usually do, that takes like an extra hour or two of editing on this. I don't think it's going to make a difference in regards to the views and I'm, I'm so busy this week and exhausted that I just have some other stuff to do. Maybe, maybe we did put, maybe I did decide to put them up, uh, but it's, it's a little annoying because you have to edit every, uh, every single one. Uh, so if you guys do want to uh, check out all of my interesting businesses, you can go to frank and if you look through the websites and the different products, you'll kind of see some things we referenced here and there. I'm always wearing my Wi-Fi shield and clothing guys at all times. Uh, you know, the, the hair pomade, the deodorant, it's a lot, a lot of stuff, guys, a lot of stuff. Everything I have on my business is the stuff I use in my personal life and uh, continuing to kind of expand and get you guys more and more products. Hopefully, especially on the foods end of things, we can start doing uh, some of the foods you guys are seeing me eat every day soon on the carbohydrate end instead of just the meat stuff. But as always, if you guys can drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell, and I'll see you guys soon.